It all started with this and also kind of this. This is a small compact speaker using like a one or two dollar uh, driver. It's 3D printed, it's small, it's experimental and it allowed me to, you know, kind of try out what these things are capable of if you pair them with a DSP and a powerful amplifier. But this is just a single iteration. We are not 3D printing so that we can make one and then just be happy with it. We are 3D printing because we can experiment and because we can try things out. So ultimately this turned into this. The modular 3D printed speaker experimentation kit, aka M3SK, or call it MESK if you're more into it sounding like a guy who's about to sell you an electric car. So what is this? This is a speaker experimentation kit, as the name implies. You have screwable modules that have drivers in them, three different ones, main bodies, main housings, and then you have end caps that either have, you know, nothing for a closed case, that have ports, that have passive membranes, and you can totally freely combine these all. You can put the long housing on the passive membrane and use this larger speaker, screw it together, there you go. There's your speaker. And there we go. Now we have a completely new speaker that's going to sound totally different to what we had just a second ago. Done. And the cool thing with these small drivers is you can just run them off of your phone. You don't have to get an amplifier, you don't have to get a DSP like this, you can just grab a headphone cord and I've put headphone jacks in the front. You can just plug those in, plug the other side into your phone, and you're gonna have a speaker that is not super loud, but you're gonna have one that you can experiment with, and you're gonna notice all the different ways this thing can sound. And you know, if I'm honest, this is, this is actually quite decent. It's not fantastic, like it's not a massively good speaker, but for like a dollar or two in materials, it's pretty good. So for example, if we switch out the passive membrane on the back with a short bass reflex tube, or of course, if you take it off, that's a massive difference. But if you replace it with the short bass reflex port, we can hear that it's now a lot more boomy. It has more of that uh, frequency in it. Or if you cap it off, Now all of a sudden the bass is more punchy but it's not as loud and not as pronounced anymore. Those are the sort of things that you can experiment with here. Of course different drivers also sound completely different so if you take this thing which is like a typical TV replacement speaker for like the super cheap TVs, plug this in and hit play. Yeah this sounds pretty bad because this driver is not fantastic. Even if you give it the passive membrane that doesn't do a whole lot. Now I started designing this set um, just for me, just you know, as a replacement for this guy, so I could you know try out different things. But as I was designing it, I thought, well, you know, this would be nice if it just existed as a system. It would be nice to have that out there. And of course, for me, this stuff is fun to play with. It's fun to see like the different results. Of course, you could do the math and kind of predict them, but having it in practice is a totally different thing. And also, as it turned out. These are so much fun to play with, just taking these parts, unscrewing them, rearranging them is one of the most satisfying things you can do. It's like 2019's fidget spinner for me. I've had these on my desk for the last week or so and whenever I sat down I was just unscrewing these and screwing these together differently. It is... It's fun. It's actually quite mesmerizing to play with these and it's quite satisfying to plot them together as well. So first and foremost, this is an experimentation kit. I made it for myself because I wanted to have it, um, but also if somebody is going to prepare a workshop around, you know, teaching the basics of acoustics, this is a great set to, to experiment with it. It is super cheap also. That's, that's one thing that I shouldn't forget to mention, but also you can actually build a pretty decent speaker with this. I also wanted these parts to have minimal non 3D printed components. So so you can see these seals are just a flexible material. This is a Printer Pro Flex Hard. The main bodies, all the blue parts are 3D printed. This is Filamentum Royal Blue PLA. It's also got 3D printed threads on there. 
so both the male and female threads are completely printed. And there were a few tricky parts to figure out with these, but overall now I'm actually very, very happy with how this all fits together. I also wanted the size to be something that is both practical, so that both creates a good enclosure for a speaker and is not super tiny, but it also shouldn't be too large to a point where first of all printing it is going to be totally impractical because now we're talking days of print times and several spools of filament. These by the way are like 500 grams or something you know, in total of PLA. Um, but also they would be impossible to grip. I have relatively short fingers and I'm actually super comfortable gripping around these. So that means anyone with any size fingers typically is going to be able to grip these. And also if you're having a workshop with, I don't know, 12, 14, 16 year olds, they are also going to be able to grip these and scream together and get them apart again. Now, there were a few really tricky parts to get these to work. These were my first dabble into Fusion 360 and doing assemblies somewhat correctly. And you can see there are quite a few iterations and revisions of the same design. But before we go through all those, let's grab a coffee first. Brought to you by today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. So it's 4 p.m., which means it's the perfect time for the German Kaffee und Kuchen, basically a break in the middle of the afternoon where you have a coffee and a piece of cake and then get back to work, as we Germans like to do. So they matched me with the Madcap Third Coast Blend. That's one of Trade Coffee's goals, to deliver the freshest coffee possible to your doorstep. Mm. You know, this actually smells like a very solid traditional coffee. Now, this got matched to me with uh, Trade Coffee's online matching quiz, where you tell it about the things you know you like about your coffee, and it can also fill in some blanks if you're uncertain about a few things. Wow, okay. It's like a traditional full-bodied coffee, but it, it has that citric freshness to it. Nice. So one of the complaints that I heard from you guys last time Trade Coffee were sponsoring a video was that they only ship inside the US and that totally makes sense. International shipping usually takes a ton of time and Trade Coffee want to get you the freshest coffee possible. The coffee Trade Coffee offers is roasted to order by 50 of the US's best coffee roasters just like with this speaker where I figured out okay this combination of this passive membrane the 20 millimeter spacer and this very speaker is is the one that I like the most. I could only figure this out because I had so many different varieties that I could try. Um, Trade Coffee tries to do the same thing with coffee where they have a huge variety of different coffees you can order, but they also kind of guide you and give you suggestions what you might like. And if you've ordered from Trade Coffee before, I would like to hear your take on the coffee you got, what sort of coffee you got and how you liked it in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing your feedback from the sponsors on these videos. And if you've not ordered from them before, you can get 50% off your first order um, by clicking the link in the video description below and using code TOMS3D. That is valid for the first 100 people who click the link in the video description below. Cheers. Well, oh, this is empty. Mm. I'm gonna make some more. So let's check out how these things are assembled. And really the only parts that need assembly are these speaker driver inserts. The 38 millimeter units are actually super simple to assemble because the driver just slides in, it's flush at the front, and you just add a dab of hot glue to secure it in place. The same with the headphone in. Actually, these are not part of the model. These are drilled after the fact because I want this to be kind of flexible. The 40 by 70 millimeter driver is screwed in because it has nice screw holes on the corners and those match up with with what's in the model and the passive membrane is super glued in you just drizzle some super glue onto the flange here and drop it in and that secures it perfectly in place and that is basically the entire assembly um, the seals here these just drop into the groove that is around the male threads this drops in, you can push it in place so that it kind of stays, or you could even glue this in, but you don't really need to. And then of course the rest is just these printed threads. And of course this older part doesn't fit into the newer ones. Now there were a few changes that I had to make during development or during the design phase of these parts. First of all, so this was the first iteration that I made. It had this kind of fine M90 by one and a half millimeter thread. So that's the finest M90 pitch that Fusion 360 can create. And it works. It totally works. Where did, where did my part go? It totally works. You can totally use it. You can screw it together. The thing is just, it takes a while. It takes a while till you get it tight and also if you use it with a seal, both with that seal or without one, 
it can kind of jam up because the, the pitch is so flat, you can really create a lot of pressure with that same amount of, of torque that you put on it. So I stopped using this super fine thread and went on to a coarser M90 by three. This is still something that you can just generate in Fusion 360 very, very easily. And this just works beautifully. I've also added this small lip uh, in front of the actual thread so that it kind of tucks into the thread first and then you can screw it together without it sliding around where there's just thread on thread. But that's just a small detail. These seals are also a few revisions in. The first ones were a bit thinner, they didn't have as much surface area and they would end up sliding around in here and wouldn't really, yeah, of, of course now it snaps in perfectly, um, but yeah they, they would kind of slide around like that and when you screwed it together it would be off to one side. These newer ones have a taper to them and are a bit more flush on this actual flange. There we go. So these seals help both with actually sealing it up and making it totally airtight, which it's, is not necessary actually. But also if you don't use the seal and you just screw it together quickly, you actually end up heating the PLA and it kind of fuses together and welds together and it's, it can be kind of hard to get it back apart if you don't have that seal as a separator in there. So. Um, yeah, that just helps to keep things apart. So you don't have to print this out of flexible material, but just as this similar one to PLA to keep it from sticking together. Now, of course, I did show how you can just plug in a phone and connect that directly to the driver and drive that entire speaker like that. But what you can also use is one of these headphone amplifiers. This is just a small FIO unit that doesn't have a ton of output power, but it still gives a lot more punch compared to just connecting it directly to the phone. And this is something that, you know, is just self-powered. It has a small battery in it. You just plug in a phone and that's it. You don't need any power supply, any PCBs, any fancy stuff like this. Yeah, that's actually quite a respectable output volume. Um, I'm gonna have to turn this down because you're gonna have a hard time hearing me. So that's something that does work really well with these smaller three watt speakers. But if you start using larger speakers, for example, a three inch or a four inch unit up front here that uses more of this space, then this is gonna be underpowered and you will need to look into using some sort of an amplifier. But thankfully, these amplifiers are also super cheap. Uh, I think this one is like a dollar or two as well, and you can run it off of a USB power source. So yeah, this was all kind of intended to be a low cost solution. Now, of course, as I just mentioned, these three different drivers aren't everything that you can use with these, um, of course. This entire thing is open source. You can get the, the full Fusion file that I made. Uh, that is all linked below. You can get the STLs and you can kind of adapt your own drivers and your own wishes to this platform. If you want to use, you know, a driver that is larger than would, would fit into this thread size, you can just flare it out and, and kind of add a, you know, a larger piece on top here. You can also, of course, experiment with different ports on the back. You can experiment with making the enclosure super long or super short or reduce it to a smaller diameter and adapt it to, I don't know, PVC pipe. That's all up to you. This was intentionally designed to be super simple to rework and adapt onto. The sizings on here are super, super simple. There's like no involved math uh, to get these made. So that for sure was a design goal uh, for me. Now, I keep showing this board, which is a DSP, an amplifier, and a small buck converter down here and the rest is just an adapter board. Now this is too large to fit in here, but I've already designed a new PCB that can fit inside here and just slot in. Um, for the time being, I've made this grill that can screw into the threads like so. It's a bit hard to grip. It's easier with a pair of pliers. But yeah, it can slot in here and you can attach your own electronics, batteries, whatever you want with this. Uh, I can also see, and I might actually design that myself, some sort of a, you know, an extender tube that houses a Bluetooth module and that just has buttons on the outside here. So if it's assembled into a speaker, you can actually control the thing from the outside and it's still like one self-contained unit. That would be incredibly cool because again, I think this would make a really great Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so one thing that I noticed while, you know, just playing around with this thing on my desk, it is actually really nice to have this uh, and just play around with it, is that the things you build aren't necessarily speakers. Um, for example, this is the passive membrane and this is the closed lid, but they still fit together. They're 
end caps for the tube. This is sort of a drum. You could make this thing thinner and actually play it like a drum. And interestingly enough, depending on what sort of back cap I guess you put on it, so this is the open one, and if you close it off with the passive membrane, it has a completely different sound to it. You can still experiment with like acoustic properties with different ports and different, you know, enclosure sizes. Oh wow, that sounds way different. You know, you can experiment with those things even without using a driver itself. That is fascinating. One thing that I also noticed is because this port, both on the super short one and the longer one, it's the perfect size to put a finger over it. So you can very easily experiment with having a ported speaker like this and a closed one by just putting a finger on it. And you can totally hear which sort of frequencies the port boosts. It of course also works if you have an actual driver and then play some music. But yeah, so I'm using the short port here and you can hear that uh, noise to it. If I put my finger on the port. Yeah, you can definitely hear which frequencies that port boosts. Basically what a port does is it boosts a certain range of frequencies. Because of the mass of air that's captured within the port acts as just a weight that is being sprung by the air inside the volume. So you can think of this as like a chunk of air that is kind of bouncing in and out of the enclosure. And if it hits that resonant frequency, it actually boosts that frequency for the entire driver. And it's the same thing with these passive membrane. This is literally a steel plate that is sprung on a rubber gasket. So it's pretty much the same thing. And because, for example, this port is using the air inside the enclosure as a spring, if we increase the size of the enclosure by adding, for example, the spacer right here, the frequency changes because now the spring is getting softer essentially because there's more air. So now we're boosting a deeper frequency with the same size port. It's all, you know, all these things just make so much sense from a physical perspective and having a modular bit like this where you can so easily explain this is just a, a ton of fun, I think, and super educational for me as well. I mean, I know all these things in theory and kind of how they connect together, but being able to experiment with it is just a whole nother level. Now, we did already quickly talk about cost and how this is designed as a low cost system. So overall, this is like 500 grams of filament, including the prototypes. So these parts are chunky and robust, but they are not super light and, and the speaker enclosure cannot be super flimsy or it's not gonna work as an enclosure. But overall, you can print a full set of parts with you know, a few different lengths of tube and a few different end caps for you know, 10 bucks worth of filament very easily. These drivers, especially these, these smaller ones that have the, the small magnet in the back, these are about a dollar. I think these, these chunkier ones are a dollar fifty or two, depending on whether you can get them on sale or not. These membranes are like 50 or 70 cents, somewhere in that range. So a complete set. So all the parts I have here are maybe combined, except the, the amplifier board, maybe are combined like a $15 set. I've bought all these drivers and of course the headphone jacks and all that off of AliExpress. Uh, it takes a while to get here, but it's definitely worth the wait because these things are just super, super cheap. I have linked all the parts that I did use in the video description below. Those are affiliate links. I would appreciate it if you use those. That gives this channel a small kickback from your purchases. Um, but overall, yeah, have fun, use these, play with them. Even if it's just for the fidget spinner uh, appeal where you have something that you can just fidget with. To me, that would definitely make this entire project already worth it. But again, I've already prototyped like my next speaker project with this, which is gonna be this driver and the passive membrane in some sort of an enclosure, maybe with a DSP, we'll see. I'm always open to see your comments on this project. And if you print these and use them for something cool, I don't know if you use them in the school or in a workshop or just print them to play around with. Uh, tweet at me, tweet a photo at me, at toms3dp. I would greatly appreciate it. I always love seeing what you guys do with the stuff that I show here. And again, I'm sharing all of these things for free and as an open source project because all of the awesome support I'm getting from you guys on Patreon, Thank you very much for that. And also thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Uh, sponsors also help out a ton in keeping this channel running. Uh, check out the link in the video description below and use code TOMS3D for 50% off your first purchase. And yeah, for all of you guys, thank you for watching. And yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I, I'm always, always kind of nervous putting these things out into the wild. Yeah.
Thanks for watching. Bye.